there, Improv Tipsters. Welcome back to Improv Tips, where I and some of the best improvisers in the world give you improv tips and advice to make you a better, more confident, and happier improviser wherever you are in your improv journey. I am, as always, your host, Paul Valencourt. Let's begin. Today, I want to talk about the idea of leaving a little meat on the bone. Leave a little meat on the bone. And so what does this mean? Well, I talk about this a lot in my classes when I'm teaching tagouts, right? So we're, t- we're doing tagouts, and maybe someone is... Um, has maybe they say something like, "Oh, I've I have a terrible dating history. I always date jerks," and then we start doing a tag out run of jerks, 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 jerks. Right at a certain point, we're sort of like. Okay, I all right, yeah, uh uh-huh, three, uh uh-huh, four, uh uh-huh, five, okay, right? But we don't necessarily need to play out every possible uh, jerky date that this person has had, right? We don't need to play all those out. In fact, we shouldn't. We should leave a little meat on the bone. Why? We want to leave a little something unexplored. We want to leave a little something for later. First of all, that goes with the old uh, showbiz axiom of leave them wanting more right? The audience sees the first three and they're like, oh, wow. Oh my gosh. Oh, 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 where are we going? I want more of that, right? But then when you bring that character back or bring that idea back sometime later in the piece, then they're excited. They're anxious to see it. And they're not thinking, oh man, more of this. Oh my gosh. Don't they have anything else, right? But if you leave a little meat on the bone, it's some, it's always something to come back to. And look, you may not come back to it. You may have another million great ideas that you play on the show, but it's always great to leave the stage with a little something in your pocket, right? That you're like, oh, we didn't use everything we had. We even had more. Uh, and that's always a, a great feeling because that's when you know you're really in it. Sometimes you leave the stage and you're like, oh my gosh, I ran out of ideas like five minutes ago and we're just like waiting for the lights. It's always great to leave the stage with some ideas left over. And part of that is investing early on and leaving a little meat on the bone for later. All right. If you're enjoying the improv tips, consider leaving a comment down below. Have you, do you do this? Do you think about this when you're improvising? And also think, consider leaving a like and subscribing so you get the improv tips as they come out. I use this technique all the time. It is one of the things that to me demonstrates mastery of the form because you're not just trying to get in on this great idea. And that's really kind of what happens all the time is you're trying to, you're not trying to just get in on this great idea. You are actually, you're riding the horse a little bit. You're controlling. Okay. I see we've done three tag outs. That seems to be pretty Oh, maybe four. Okay, great. That seems to be good. Then you're at this point where you're talking about this idea of the impulse to add versus the impulse to edit. Do I add to this existing idea or do I edit it? And then we can come back to it later, right? This inflection point of the impulse to add versus the impulse to edit is really important. I feel like as we get to be like medium improvisers, we've been doing it for like a couple of years and we have some experience and now we're not sort of just trying to survive every show. We're really trying to sort of uh, shape what comes out. Then this idea of do I add or do I edit? Leaving a little meat on the bone. These things are really some of the issues that we're thinking about and dealing with when we come into control a little bit of our work. Okay? Thanks for listening, and I'll see you next week.